Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, long dead, um, suicide or not suicide, you decide. I've never thought it was suicide, <laughs> but there we are. Um, but uh, this, of course, when he was facing uh, these uh, horrific charges, uh, basically running a, a, a child sex ring. I mean, let's call it what it was, mm. a child sex rape ring. Yeah. Um, he basically spent uh, his many billions um, with his private jets, um, and his lovely holiday island and his posh homes, basically uh, jetting around, you know, 14 and 15, 16 year old girls mm. to be, to be, you know, effectively raped Abuse. by him and yeah. other rich, powerful men. Mm. We've got enough testimony uh, through enough court cases to know that it was happening. Now, um, there is a thing called the Epstein List. Mm. And that, we believe, is going to be published today. The reason it's going to be published is this is a hundreds of, of sealed court filings about Jeffrey Epstein, the, the sex trafficker, obviously. Um, are, they're going to be uh, basically released as a result of uh, appeals by American newspapers. And they are expected to include the names of very prominent people, including our very own Prince Andrew, of course, we know, continue to have a friendship mm. uh, with this man, even after he had been convicted of... Uh, basically uh, child trafficking. I mean, yeah. he'd been convicted. It wasn't a rumour, mm. you know. Um, and also the former US President Bill Clinton, but many other names, dozens and dozens and dozens of names, some very powerful, very rich, famous men likely to be on that list. Well, joining me right now uh, to discuss this is Adam Coleman, columnist at the New York Post, been covering this story. Uh, good afternoon to you, or good morning to you, where you are, of course. <laughs> yes, thank um, you. Good morning. Now, there's been lots of talk about this list that was going to be published um, uh, early this week. Uh, from Monday onwards, it's all over social media, particularly Twitter. Everyone waiting with bated breath to find out who the names are. We told Prince Andrew very concerned uh, and others. Um, when are we actually going to see this list? And what do you expect to be on it? So the, the rumour is going around uh, and the expectation is supposed to be within, I would say, the next 24 hours. The name should be released. It's still early here today. A lot of people were saying, actually, the, the list may actually come out today, uh, but, it, you know, it's 7 a.m. Uh, on the east, eastern coast. So um, it's likely to come out within the next 24 hours. What do I expect from the list? I expect prominent names to be on this list. Uh, you mentioned Prince Andrew, likely uh, Bill Clinton um, to be on, named on this list as well. Um, but what's very interesting is the uh, concern about victims' names being on the list. Uh, some are saying that the victims names will be withheld for their protection. Others are worried that it won't be withheld. Well, these names have been circulating around in court documents um, for, I think, some nine years. Um, people, I understand, who are on this list, whose names are going to be released in these court documents, that they have actually, they, they have been given an opportunity to make an argument to the court that their names should be redacted. So if they haven't mm -hmm. done that by, I think the deadline was, was yesterday, then their name should be on it. But what, what, does the, what do these names know? I mean, look, we, you know, we've seen all the pictures of Jeffrey Epstein. I mean, he, was, he knew everybody. There's pictures of him with every, you know, with Bill Clinton, with, uh, you know, with Bill Gates, with Donald Trump. You know, he, was, he hosted parties. He went to every party. He was a massive New York socialite. Uh, we know loads of very famous and rich people flew on his private jets, visited his island uh, as well. Um, um, now, you know, what, what does it tell us? If a name is on this list, does it tell us that they were also involved in horrific crimes against young women who've been solicited basically to be sex slaves, which is pretty much what the allegations have been in court? Um, what, what, what does it tell us? Or does it tell us that these are simply people, mostly men, we think, who, you know, I don't know, went to a party once or had dinner once with this billionaire? How much can we read into the names being on a list? Well, see, that's actually the problem with this. While it's good to have transparency, the problem is that the list in itself doesn't tell us everything. Uh, it might give some give us some indicators as far as who he associated with, but like you said, he could have been uh, associating with someone who went to a party one time. Uh, Elon Musk has been photographed with him. How much did he really know him, or did he just show up at an event because everybody else uh, who's a billionaire showed up at the event or famous? Uh, the problem is that, in, to, in my opinion, it sounds like Jeffrey Epstein was using uh, himself as a honeypot. Um, he was luring in uh, unscrupulous men and sometimes innocent men, uh, you know, uh, unscrupulous men, I should say. He was luring in people who were famous. And I think the purpose of his activity was to gain some sort of leverage to hold it against them, yeah. uh, whether it be for the government or some other entity. 
but it sounds like that's what he was ultimately well, we, being we used know that, for. I mean, there's been a few documentaries about what happened, you know, in, in his homes and, and, you know, people, staff who worked for him and people who were there, a number of the women coming forward, not just Virginia Roberts now, Virginia Dufre, who's, who's brought those cases. Um, I mean, other women as well. I mean, we've seen clear conviction. Ghislaine Maxwell is behind bars for a reason. She was part of this whole procurement of, of these of these young girls and luring them into this um, and, and stopping them leaving. Um, but they, we understood, mm -hmm. you know, everything was on tape. The guy had a camera in every single room of his home. He obviously wanted to catch things. And why exactly. would he... Unless it was either for his own sexual enjoyment or because he was going to use it against people. I mean, it's probably... Uh, um, well, it might be both. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, he is a pervert. But um, more than likely, it's being used against these men. Yeah. Um, I doubt some famous billionaire is going to willingly go into some private room with a camera uh, you know, knowing that there's a camera yeah. to be filmed while sexual acts are being used. No, exactly. So, but, you know, but the, I, but the, I highly but doubt the biggest issue here, though, is these names are people who mm. continue to have dealings, close dealings with it would appear, with a man who had already been convicted of child sex trafficking. And we show, while you were talking, we've shown on the, uh, on the, the TV show, we've shown some of the pictures of Prince Andrew walking, I think, in Central Park with Jeffrey Epstein again after he had been convicted of child sex trafficking, for which, by the way, he served virtually no sentence. I mean, he was in, open, when I say open prison, I mean, I mean, he was there probably a couple of hours a day max. You know, he, let, he continued to live a jet-set mm -hmm. lifestyle while supposedly behind bars. It was quite bizarre. But, I mean, Prince Andrews always said, look, I, I had to go and see him and, bizarrely, stay in his home for four days um, because I, I had to break off my friendship with him. And that's not normally what people do to break off a friendship with someone you've suddenly discovered is a child sex trafficker. The allegation that's been made by not just Virginia Roberts and, and all the other women who've been involved, and there are so many others who've come forward, but also many people who, you know, speaking anonymously later on, who worked on the island in the Caribbean, who, who worked in his home, or people who visited his home in London, in, sorry, in New York, was that you could not possibly not know that something dodgy was going on. This is a man with no children, and yet, there were a bunch of 15-year-old girls hanging around. I didn't even want a bunch of 15-year-old girls hanging around my home when I had a 15-year-old girl myself, you know. I mean, I'm <laughs> making light of it, but, you know, I, if, I, if I walked into the home of a, of a middle-aged man and there's a bunch of scantily clad 15-year-old girls, I would ask some sodding questions. And it appears that some of the, most, the richest, most powerful, most intelligent, celebrated men in America didn't ask any questions. Well, they might not have asked any questions because, and I don't know if people really consider this, Jeffrey Epstein probably isn't, isn't the only rich person who throws a party with a bunch of 15, 16 year old girls. Yep. So it's probably not abnormal. That's actually the disturbing part. I don't think Jeffrey Epstein is the only man uh, who's doing this type of activity. Um, maybe people are showing up and thinking that they're over 18 and they're really 16, 15 years old for whatever reason, or they just don't care because it's normalized within their circle. Uh, but there is a level of perversion, and there's a level of perversion that they're able to get away with because of their status, because of their wealth and their fame. Yeah, absolutely. And it's what's also fascinating is when we hear about these incredibly rich people, you know, the Clintons, you know, ever since they left office, they've had plenty of money. The Bill Gates, one of the richest men in the world, and people like that. And many of them saying they regret their dealings with this man and, and, and insist no wrongdoing has ever taken place. But yes, they did have a friendship or they'd met with or had dinner with this man. But so many of them, you know, going on his private jet. It's the fact that these sort of these multimillionaires and billionaires still love to freeload. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Uh, you hear famous people talking about how they get free stuff all the time. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, they, they're willing to hang out with him because, you know, you are the company that you keep, in my yeah. opinion. Um, especially, like you said, if news comes out that a friend of mine uh, was involved in some sort of sex trafficking or involved with minor girls, I easily disassociate with that person because, <laughs> yes. you know, you are the friends that you keep. And maybe you didn't know before, but now you know. Uh, you should automatically stop. And the fact that people still hung out with them, regardless, I wouldn't hang out with someone if I found that they're a convicted criminal. Yeah, I mean, uh, you might you put know. a phone call in or write an email <laughs> to say, oh, 
I'm horrified and disgusted by your behaviour and I, I want nothing more to do with you. But yeah, if you don't go and stay in their house, I have to say, I mean, Bill Clinton has said, you know, he had flown on Epstein's aeroplane, but he has not spoken to Epstein in well over a decade. He said that in a 2019 statement, he said he knew nothing about the terrible crimes that Jeffrey Epstein committed. Um, Donald Trump, by the way, back in 2002, told New York Magazine, I've known Jeff for years, so 15 years. Terrific guy. He's a lot of fun to be with. It's even said he likes beautiful women as much as I do. And many of them are on the younger side. I mean, they weren't, <laughs> they weren't 25. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, like I said, Donald Trump knew everybody. Um, Jeffrey Epstein knew everybody. It is not uncommon to see uh, people of the same social circle involved with each other and know about each other. Yeah. To what extent they knew as to what was going on? Did Donald Trump know everything that was going on there? Probably not. I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. Um, what is known and what Donald Trump is very transparent about is that there are young girls there. And I think most people would assume that they're 18 and up. They just look pretty young. And, but you know, they were attractive and that's all they cared about. And they just kept them moving. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they're not they're not checking IDs at these parties. No, indeed. That said, so, I was having watched some of the documentaries, looking at some of the images of the uh, of the young girls, uh, you know, and so clearly, you know, mid teens. They're so clearly mid teens, uh, you know, inappropriately young, even for a sort of, you know, a, you know, a 25 year old man, let alone men in their 50s. And I mean, it just, it's so repulsive.